What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down some very important things about the market and talk about what's going on for the upcoming week. I'm also gonna talk about some technicals and then break down something big that's coming. But before I break anything down all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am personally not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also if you guys can, please check out the Mumu link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Mumu, the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you are guaranteed up to five free stocks. This offer ends in just about uh, 11 days from now, so check it out before they run out. Anyways, let's break down what's going on with the market. So looking at SPY, we have this bearish divergence that developed on the chart. This happened near the very end of the day, and then this thing started to sell off just a bit. But the question now remains is, uh, are we going to see this thing just sell off from here? Or are we going to see this thing kind of like bounce first and then get that sell off? And either way, guys, I don't truly know which one's going to be, but I believe there's going to be some kind of pullback coming soon. And the reason why I don't truly know is because on Monday, before the market opens, we have Berkshire Hathaway's earnings. I don't know if this is going to give us one last little pump before the market starts to cool off. Or if the market is done, and it's just going to cool off from here. It's got to be one of those two. So we'll be watching this very carefully on Monday morning. But either way, I still see, you know, technicals looking very simple at this point. So when you look at SPY or SPY or whatever you want to call it, you will notice that right here around this 438 area, we have a lot of tight resistance. This is where we tend to see a lot of sellers stepping in. So if we do come that high, thanks to like Berkshire Hathaway or something, I anticipate a rejection will come anyways and SPY is going to start cooling off. But... If we fail to even get up there and the top is already in for this like rally, at least this, this temporary rally for the time being, then it's also possible that this thing could just start sinking a little bit. And here's what you're going to be watching for. You're going to be watching 433 as key resistance going into next week. Uh, I'm sorry, for support, you're going to be watching 433. If we lose that, I anticipate it's going to come all the way back down to 430.5 pretty quickly to fill this gap. And let me give you a better like visual of that. So this is what it's looking like on the chart. As you can see, we have this big gap right here on SPY. So if you see this thing lose our 20 EMA, because this is going to start uptrending a little bit more by the time we get to Monday, this is going to be around 433. If we lose this, I anticipate this gap to get filled. I think it's going to fill this entire gap down to the 430 area. And I don't know if we're going to pop first and then breakdown or if we just break down from here it looks like from a technical standpoint that we're just going to break down from here and the market's going to start selling off and i do find that a bit more probable but just to be safe we got to be watching berkshire hathaway's earnings to see if this causes one more pop because sometimes in the market you never know what could happen now when it comes to the market part of why i'm calling for some downside at least whether we get a pop or not i'm still calling for downside is because when you look at the daily chart this is just insane absolutely insane five straight days of crazy green days spy was at 409 on friday of last week and now it's at 436 how insane is that and going back throughout history i don't think we've ever seen or we've seen you know this many green days in a row with this much pumping simultaneously in such a short period of time even in 2022 i never saw that i never saw this even in like 2020 I'm not seeing this, right? The market does not typically pump this hard with no selling. That, that was just insane. It just shows how insane and strong these bulls are and how much they can move this market because moving SPY is not easy. Moving the S&P 500, moving these massive, massive indices is not easy whatsoever. It takes billions and billions of dollars. So imagine how many billions, if not trillions of dollars made its, their way into the stock market. It's just it's just unbelievable how much money there is that's pumping up these markets. So it just shows how crazy and how volatile the market could be. But I just want to warn everyone that it's not the end for the rally. There's going to be a slight pullback coming. I'm anticipating that, but the market's going to find a higher low relative to this low, and we're going to start uptrending very, very soon. I'm going to talk more about December for my video for tomorrow. I'm just going to focus on what's going to happen for the short term. That's going to be a temporary pullback, which is going to be very, very healthy. Either we pop a little bit more first, then we come back down, or we just come back down from here. Now on Tesla, the same thing, it looks like it's developing. We look kind of bearish on the daily because what happened was, 
Tesla started selling off early on. Tesla was looking kind of weak early on. We have a head and shoulders like pattern developing right above this gap. So it looks like Tesla might come down and start sinking to fill this gap near 205 very soon over the next couple of trading days, maybe going into next week. A very healthy pullback is going to be fine because like I said in my previous videos, I still believe in Tesla. I think Tesla is going to fill this gap up here. Uh, I think this gap is going to get filled up here anyways, but it looks like we're starting to look bearish now on Tesla and this thing could come back down. So I don't know if Berkshire Hathaway is going to give us one last last like pop on Tesla to retest our 50 EMA on the four hour time frame. I don't know if we're going to get one last pop and then drop or if we just drop from here thanks to the head and shoulders. Either way, I think Tesla ultimately is going to come down to fill this gap. It's going to ultimately see some downside. I think that the market selling off is going to contribute to causing that for Tesla as algorithms start to adjust. However, it is not at all the end of the world. It's just another buying opportunity, another blessing that's coming. And we're going to be watching this very carefully. If Tesla loses 212, I anticipate this gap to get filled. If Tesla does not end up breaking below 212, if it just kind of like hovers around there, I could still see you know it trying to hold up. But I still see it at least coming down to that level at the very least, I do anticipate some downside, so it's going to be very important to watch for that. Uh, for people invested in AMC or interested in AMC, AMC has earnings, I think, on Wednesday. Let me just double check this calendar. Yeah, so on Wednesday, we have AMC's earnings. Uh, and it's going to be after the market closes. Their earnings reports go on for a very long time, especially when the finance sector starts talking. It just takes forever. But the thing about AMC is this has some potential because when you look at the daily chart, you will notice that... It's starting to uptrend a bit. It's, it had a very nice accumulation phase and it's forming a cup and handle. So I could see AMC trying to fill this gap and coming back to the $12 area over the next couple of weeks. I could see $12 plus. But before that happens, though, I think that AMC has some downside coming. I think AMC is going to come back down towards uh, 9.84 or so because it looks like it's rejecting on the daily time frame. And on the four-hour time frame, it looks even more... Uh, evidence that this thing is becoming weaker and it's losing some strength. So it might get a very healthy pullback. Remember, AMC was pumping for the last couple of days with the markets. This thing was at $7. Now it's back at $10. So it's quite a pump it got over the last couple of weeks. So I wouldn't be surprised if AMC tries to get a little rebound. AMC was at 7.3 just at the very start of October. Uh, right before November started, this thing was at $8, 8 points nine and now it's at it just hit eleven dollars that's another nice pump that came so it's up quite a bit so it is going to be due for a slight pullback i think it's going to pull back a little bit but amc is going to find a bottom this not, this is not necessarily like capitulation or anything like that for another bounce and i think that maybe after earnings as long as earnings are not too bad and something's something that's not too bad is uh, announced by adam aaron there is potential for it to try to fill this gap i think that there's definitely potential apple might get a rejection because when you look at the daily time frame, Apple has been trying to pump a bit. I think Apple has some potential to pump a little higher, try to fill its gap, and then it could just reject from there. So I, I anticipate another rejection for Apple because we're anticipating some key resistance. The same area where Apple went to right before earnings could act as resistance again, and I think that this could drag the markets. So watch this gap right here, this gap to get filled where this uh, supply zone happens to be. And if we end up filling this gap, you know, we, we could see 178 and then rejection after that. And I could see Apple potentially cooling off just in a very healthy manner after how much it pumped over the last couple of days. Keep in mind, Apple was all the way down at 165 just a couple of days ago. And now it's all the way up to almost 180. So it pumped quite a bit. A healthy little pullback would be completely normal, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, for NVIDIA, I'm going to talk very quickly about this one. Nvidia is not looking bad. It's trying to pump higher. If Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett, excuse me, and Berkshire Hathaway give us some kind of really nice pump, we're gonna be watching this imbalance right here at 457. If we break this, could we could see like 460 then a rejection? That is technically still possible, but from a technical standpoint, it looks more likely like Nvidia is gonna cool off instead of doing that. So it's going to depend on Berkshire Hathaway. But from a technical standpoint, it looks like it's not gonna get that pump and dump. It might just uh, be a very small pump and then just kind of cool off from here because on the four hour time frame, NVIDIA is looking a little weaker. Uh, you can see NVIDIA made an attempt to pump and it's starting to cool off just a little bit. We got a good close above 450, so I could see NVIDIA kind of coming down to fill this gap right here. So 
uh, there is a risk of NVIDIA coming back down uh, to retest our 20 EMA at 443. I don't know if it's going to reject here. If it loses 450, there's a risk of that. If it's going to come down to 443 from here, or if it tries to pump it because of Berkshire Hathaway, and then we just get a rejection afterwards. But either way, I see some downside potentially coming after the amount of pumping it did. Keep in mind, just a couple of days ago, this was at 392, then it managed to reach 453. So look for a little pop and then a drop, or it just drops from here. And I anticipate some downside. I think that NVIDIA will eventually fill some of these gaps. I think this gap down here at 437 is going to get filled, and I think there's going to be a little bit of downside after how much pumping we did. Now, keep in mind, even though the market could see a little downside, on Wednesday, we have Jerome Powell again. The guy's giving a speech. The guy just never leaves us. He keeps on returning. And it's pretty crazy. I mean, he could pump the markets again. You never know what's going to happen on Wednesday. But anyways, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Uh, market may cool off a little bit. We'll see if we get one last pop and then a drop thanks to a Berkshire Hathaway or not, or if the market just drops from here. And then we'll see what happens once we find our bottom. No matter what happens, guys, let me just tell you one thing. I'm still bullish for the markets. The market's going to get a very healthy pullback, but then there's going to be even more upside coming for NVIDIA, for Tesla, for SPY for the end of the year. I'm still anticipating more upside for December, so I'm not losing faith whatsoever just because I'm talking about a very healthy pullback. All right, so I'll, I'm going to be talking more about December in tomorrow's video. But for now, I'm just going to end it from here. Please have a great weekend, guys, and I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks again, and peace out.